I'm Ashley Pena Ellsburn. Um, I'm a transplant dietitian here at UT Southwestern and I'll be talking about nutrition and transplant. First, the importance of nutrition and transplant is that nutrition plays a really important role before and after transplant. To get you ready for transplant, we wanna make sure that your body is in the best shape or condition that it can be. And that means controlling any pre-existing conditions that you may have, like higher blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, but also making sure to maintain a healthy body weight. After transplant, it's important to have a good nutrition because it can help impact your recovery and also long-term health maintenance. For recovery, good nutrition can promote wound healing and prevent infection. Long-term after transplant, good nutrition can help control high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and weight gain that tend to be common side effects associated with the transplant medications. To decrease your risk of heart disease and high blood cholesterol and triglycerides, you'll want to follow a heart-healthy diet. The principles of the heart-healthy diet include limiting foods with added fats, added salt, and added sugar. An added benefit of the heart-healthy diet is it can help maintain or control your weight. What does a heart-healthy diet look like? First, we want to reduce our intake of foods that contain saturated fats. A diet high in saturated fat can contribute to elevated LDL or bad blood cholesterol levels, increasing your risk for cardiovascular disease or stroke. Foods high in saturated fat tend to be animal-based products like fatty cuts of meat, poultry skin, bacon, sausage, and whole fat dairy products like whole milk, cream, yogurt, cheeses, and butter. A good visualization for saturated fats is they tend to be solid at room temperature. So that would include coconut oil and palm oils as well. The other type of fat you'll want to limit are trans fats, which are found in a lot of packaged and processed foods. Trans fats can raise your LDL or bad blood cholesterol and decrease your HDL or good blood cholesterol, increasing your risk for cardiovascular disease. To identify trans fats in foods, read the ingredients list for partially hydrogenated oils and do your best to eliminate any foods that have these ingredients. So what's allowed on the heart healthy diet? It's really important to choose your lean cuts of meat. So eating more chicken, fish, turkey, more often than some of the higher fat meats like beef and pork. You'll also wanna choose lower fat dairy products like skim milk or 1% milk. The other thing you'll want to increase in your diet is the omega-3 fats. Omega-3 fats can reduce your triglyceride levels and may help improve your HDL or good blood cholesterol levels. Omega-3 fats are found in cold ocean, fast swimming fish like tuna, salmon, mackerel, but also in some plant-based products like flaxseed or flaxseed oil and walnuts. Finally, you wanna make sure you have a diet high in fiber. Fiber in foods can help lower your LDL or bad blood cholesterol. Fiber in foods are gonna be in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, dried beans, and legumes. Now in order to help control high blood pressure, hypertension, and even help control fluid retention on your body, you'll wanna follow a low sodium diet. Low sodium means anywhere from 1500 to 2000 milligrams of sodium per day. To put that into perspective, one teaspoon of table salt has 2300 milligrams of sodium. So the best way to lower sodium in your diet is to take that salt shaker off the table, but also to season your foods with herbs, spices, and seasonings that are sodium free. Fresh herbs or dried herbs are gonna be lowest in sodium. So when you're in the spice aisle of the grocery store, look for seasonings that don't have salt in the name, like garlic salt, celery salt, onion salt, or seasoning salts. To lower sodium in your diet even more, you'll want to cook with fresher ingredients. Fresh ingredients are lowest in sodium. Those would be fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, fresh raw cuts of meat from the butcher area of your grocery store, and frozen vegetables. Generally, processed foods, anything in a box, bag, or can, like frozen dinners, frozen entrees, canned vegetables, canned soups, snack foods like potato chips, pretzels, crackers, all tend to be high in sodium, so it's best to avoid those. But there are smarter ways to shop some of those more packaged foods. So when you're at the grocery store, looking on your packaged items for foods that are labeled low sodium. Low sodium is a food marketing claim that means there's less than 140 milligrams of sodium per serving of that food item. 
Depending on your kidney function before transplant, you may be familiar with the mineral potassium. Potassium is a mineral that helps your muscles and heart work correctly. Healthy kidneys help maintain normal levels of potassium in your diet, but damaged kidneys may cause higher potassium levels in your blood and body. When you have higher potassium levels, you'll want to do your best to avoid high potassium foods. High potassium foods are bananas, tomatoes, potatoes, oranges, milk, peanut butter, and another food called salt substitutes are also high in potassium. Some brands of salt substitutes you may see at the grocery store would be no salt, new salt, also salt, light salt. If you're concerned that your seasoning salt has any potassium in it, a good rule of thumb is to read the ingredients and look for potassium chloride. If it has potassium chloride, you're using a salt substitute. After kidney transplant and based on your labs, you should be able to gradually reincorporate some of those higher potassium foods that you may have been avoiding. However, some of the transplant medications may cause higher potassium levels in your body, so you may need to avoid some high potassium foods every once in a while after transplant. Now, phosphorus is another mineral that helps your body maintain strong bones and teeth. Kidneys can also help maintain phosphorus levels in your body. If you have kidney disease, you may have higher phosphorus levels. To help control high phosphorus levels in your body, you'll wanna follow a lower phosphorus diet or avoid those high phosphorus foods. High phosphorus foods are going to be dairy products like milk, cheeses, yogurts, also nuts, seeds, beans, peanut butter. Based on your labs, you should be able to reincorporate these high phosphorus foods that you may have been avoiding before transplant. To help determine what foods you should be eating after transplant, you will be meeting with one of the transplant dietitians to talk about these minerals again. After transplant, again, it's not uncommon to maybe have some unintentional weight gain. You'll wanna make sure that you're following weight maintenance principles by keeping an eye on the portion sizes of your foods, avoiding foods that are high in fat, like fried foods, also avoiding foods that are high in sugar, like your sweets, such as cakes, candies, cookies, pies. Also making sure that the primary beverage that you're drinking on throughout the day is a calorie-free and hydrating fluid, like water. Soda or diet soda does not count. Another principle with help maintaining your body weight or even losing weight after transplant is physical activity. So exercise is allowed and encouraged. You wanna make sure to move your body to help maintain your body weight. So finally, diet after transplant is really based on all of the principles I already mentioned, but making sure to continue to follow that healthy diet because it's not uncommon to see after transplant because of the medications, higher cholesterol, higher blood pressure, diabetes, and unintentional weight gain. Because of the transplant medications, you'll also have to avoid grapefruit because it's a medication interaction. Finally, food safety. Some of the transplant medications are lowering your immune system. When you have a lowered immune system, you may be more at risk to foodborne illness. So you wanna do your best to avoid certain types of foods that have higher risk of bacteria or bacterial contamination. First group of foods would be to avoid raw or undercooked meat, fish, seafood products. The other group of food we want to avoid would be raw or undercooked eggs. A good visualization for eggs is to make sure that the yolk is fully set or solid after transplant. Other general food safety tips would be washing your hands before cooking, before eating, wiping down countertops and tabletops at home, making sure you're washing all of your fresh fruits fresh vegetables before you eat them. Again, after transplant, you'll meet with a transplant dietitian to review food safety and individual diet goals.